dear Thay, dear Sangam, um, this is on behalf of the whole teenage group. The question is uh, like this. I am sure I'm not the only one to feel loneliness or sadness, as well as anger towards myself. I have recently struggled with self-hatred and being overly demanding, impatient, uncaring and mean towards myself. I didn't take care of my body and I would emotionally and physically harm myself. How do I learn to care for myself and love myself after having this deep sadness become my habit energy? And how do I stop the negative perceptions of myself? This, uh, this question uh, should be addressed to uh, parents and school teachers. And if uh, parents and teachers uh, have enough time, they will see that uh, it is an environment that is uh, responsible for the situation of the teenagers. Uh, first in the family, maybe uh, uh, children do not have a chance to learn how to how to love themselves and to take care of themselves. If uh, parents know how to love themselves and take care of themselves, and then children will naturally learn from them, because parents are a kind of teacher. So parents are responsible. Parents uh, suffer and do not know how to handle their suffering and parents uh, suffer and make each other suffer. And that is uh, they create that kind of environment in family where the child is not nourished. Uh, where the child got a lot of wounds within themselves. And when they, when they go to school, Teachers cannot help them either, because teachers uh, may be like uh, parents, they have problems at home, and uh, they bring their problems uh, into school. Uh, at home they have uh, difficulty with their children, and uh, in school they have problems with their students, the kind of uh, students, uh, children also. And if uh, school teachers do not know how to handle the suffering in them, uh, school teachers do not know how to, um, to love themselves and take care of themselves. Uh, they cannot help the students to do the same. If we have uh, happy teachers, if we have teachers who know how to love themselves and take care of themselves, and then the child will have a second chance. <coughs> the second chance is the school that has a good environment where teachers are capable of uh, being uh, compassionate, peaceful, uh, loving. But if teachers do not know how to handle the suffering, and then there's no second chance for, for the child. And people uh, in the Ministry of Education, they should be aware 
that the environment in school and the environment in uh, in in family is not uh, conducive to peace, to mutual respect, <coughs> to uh, to love, to understanding, and they should uh, they should uh, try to to change the education system. They should bring into school the kind of uh, teaching that can help uh, the young people how to love themselves, how to take care of themselves, how to heal, and to bring that practice home in order to help parents also. So this is a huge problem. And uh, But the young people they can help. They can express themselves. Suppose, uh, like this morning, when you ask the question, you help uh, us as parents and teachers to be aware of the situation. Because uh, we may be too busy with our suffering, with our anger with our problems that we do not have the time to listen to you. So as uh, you are there and ask the question, you help us to know what is going on. And we have a chance to, to think about changing our way in order for you to have uh, a better chance to change. And in Plum Village we have, uh, we can offer that kind of teaching and practice that can help, help us um, um, take care of our body, uh, uh, protect our body, and treasure our body, and uh, heal. And when we are able to do that, we can help uh, our parents and our teachers also. The fact is that uh, there have been uh, retreats for young people, for children, uh, where uh, children, young people can practice and heal. And after that, they go home and help uh, uh, their parents and invite their parents to join uh, uh, a retreat and practice and heal. It has happened. Uh, these things uh, have happened already in many places. Uh, and uh, it begins with the practice of uh, the children, the young people. So the young people should not feel helpless. There are things that can do in order to start uh, changing the situation. And finally, they will help uh, teachers and parents to change also. In Plum Village, uh, we learn that uh, we learn that uh, we have a body, and our body is a wonder. Our body is a masterpiece of the, the cosmos. Uh, biologists, uh, neuroscientists, uh, they all agree that the human body is a masterpiece. It's a wonder. And we have to learn how to treasure, to protect to preserve that uh, masterpiece of the cosmos. And we also learn that uh, this body has been transmitted to us by generations of ancestors. And uh, our ancestors have not died. They are still alive in our body. So if we mistreat our body, we mistreat all our ancestors. Our parents are also in our body, 
and we are continuation, the continuation of our parents. So that is a kind of uh, practice. We have to look again at our body and begin to respect it, begin to try to preserve it, to protect it. And we also learn very concrete things like uh, to calm our body. There is, uh, there is uh, stress, uh, tension, and pain in our body. And in Plum Ridge you learn how to breathe and to walk in such a way that can release tension in our body. These are very concrete practices that maybe our parents do not know and teachers do not know. But we have a chance to know to do that. We can practice uh, releasing tension, reducing pain in our body. Then in Plum Ridge we also learn how to, how to calm a feeling, how to calm an emotion, and to have a peace. These things uh, have not been taught by our parents and our teachers, but now we have a chance to learn. So there are a lot of things uh, teenagers can do and improve themselves first. We know that the five mindfulness trainings are very helpful. If you live according to the five trainings, you can protect yourself. You don't allow, you don't allow yourself, uh, your, your body and your mind to be, um, to be destroyed, to be ruined by the environment. If you don't respect your body, and the other person will not respect your body. If you don't respect yourself, and they don't respect you, that is why you have to respect yourself first. Your body is something beautiful, uh, sacred. This is a masterpiece of the uh, cosmos. And uh, it can be filled with peace and well-being and joy. And if we know the practice, it can help our body um, to, uh, um, to be uh, protected, to heal and to be a source of joy for us and for other people. Uh, in Plum Ridge we learn how to, to love ourselves, to respect ourselves, our body and our, and our mind. And the five mindfulness trainings are very concrete practice in order to do so. In Plum Village, we also practice uh, taking refuge in the Sangha. Mm, there is uh, a group of people. There, is, uh, there are individuals that uh, know how to to practice peace and joy. And each of us as a teenager should have a should should have a, a place like that in order to take refuge. In a tradition every child has a god mother, a god father. Where you go and get help when you have a problem. In Plum Ridge, we have the second body. Everyone has a second body. When you have a problem, you call him, you go to him or to her, and ask for help. 
and that is a kind of garden angel, uh, very concrete. That can be a monk or a nun or an uncle or a friend who has a peace, uh, solidity, freedom, joy. And each of us, teenager, has to had to had to get one like that. We call it second man. Uh, in our time of trouble, we can always go to him or to her and ask for protection and help. And the best is to have a body of people who 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 can be a uh, a source of inspiration, of protection. So teenagers can uh, seek to belong to a group of people, to a Sangha. Like a Sangha privilege, or you might set up a Sangha in the, in the town, in the city that you live. And uh, with that the group of people, you have uh, a place for refuge. And every time you have a problem, you suffer, you are confused, you can go for refuge and you seek advice, you seek protection. Everyone needs uh, a person or a community, community like that. And Thay also, although his, uh, his practice is solid, but he always needs a Sangha. He also practices uh, taking refuge in a Sangha. Uh, there are young people in Plum Village. There are, there are monks and nuns, novices, uh, uh, under 20. And because they practice uh, the trainings, the mindfulness trainings, they protect the body and the mind. And uh, they are pure. They are fresh, they are solid, because they practice the precepts. And practicing the precepts, they generate uh, the, the energy of uh, holiness. You know, holiness is something, la sanctity is something possible. When you practice one of the five precepts, you generate the energy of holiness. Like, uh, you know how to protect people, animals, and plants. You have compassion that is uh, the element of holiness in you. When you practice uh, um, uh, uh, dry speech uh, and compassionate listening and help people to suffer less, and you generate the ill the element of uh, the energy of holiness in you. And the element of holiness is a kind of energy that can protect you. When you, protect, when you practice the fifth mindfulness training, you consume only the healthy uh, products. You don't consume alcohol and drugs. You don't use marijuana, cocaine. You refrain from drinking uh, alcohol. Uh, you keep your body healthy and sane. You practice, uh, you generate uh, the energy of holiness. So in Bloomridge, I see very young monks and nuns and lay people at the age of my grandchildren. And yet they are capable of generating the energy of holiness, and I take refuge in them. Uh, that holiness uh, generated by the practice of mindfulness and concentration and insight is so equivalent to the Holy Spirit in Christianity. And if you are protected by the Holy Spirit, and then your body, your mind is protected, and you have that kind of holiness, purity, um, peace, enjoy and you can heal very easily it is the holy spirit that can heal you 
it is the whole the, the energy of holy, holiness by uh, generated by the practice of the precepts of uh, mindful walking, mindful sitting, mindful talking, mindful uh, handling of your anger. Uh, it is that energy that can heal you. And uh, to be holy is possible. And uh, when you are sane, healthy, uh, joyful, compassionate, you can help your parents, you can help your teachers. So organize yourself into groups of practitioners, supporting each other, practice uh, healing and nourishment every day, and you get the healing that you need. Mm. There is the whole, the all uh, habit energy of letting go, of uh, of uh, of letting yourself be uh, be carried away by sensual pleasures, by anger, by uh, fear, by hate, by despair. But now we can begin to 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 create a new habit, energy, the, the habit energy of uh, holiness, of, uh, of peace, of mindfulness, of brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, in order to heal us. This is uh, possible with the teaching uh, of the Buddha that, uh, that you can find in Plumlish. You know, Plumlish is um, a simple place. There's no uh, nothing fancy, but uh, but the environment is healthy. It's safe. There's a spirit of uh, uh, of uh, of a brotherhood, uh, sisterhood. Uh, there's uh, uh, the feeling of peace. Because everyone is uh, practicing peaceful walking, peaceful sitting, peaceful talking, peaceful consuming. So this atmosphere is a very, um, is very um, um, conducive to healing. And you, uh, young people, you can help uh, create. Uh, 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 environment like that, uh, and together you can help create uh, uh, that en- environment in school. That you can create that environment in uh, uh, in the family, because uh, one person may not be able to create, but three of you, four of you, five of you together. And if you have that collective energy of peace and, and, and brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, wherever you go, you bring that energy along with you. And you can come, begin to change people, to change the, the atmosphere uh, in, uh, in, in the place you go. So don't be despair. Uh, you can create a new habit, good habit. The habit to be compassionate, the habit to be um, um, peaceful, uh, and uh, we can heal our anger, our despair. Uh, don't give up. Uh, and uh, the five mindfulness standings are not um, are not something they impose on you, because you wake up and then you see that. Uh, uh, you don't like that kind of uh, living anymore. The style of life that can, that can, that is always destroying your body and your feelings anymore. And you realize that living according to the five trainings, you can heal yourself. That is why you are wholeheartedly um, taking up that kind of uh, practice in order to heal you and help heal your family and your group. 
So they propose that you sit up as a group and discuss and find a way uh, uh, to create uh, together a new habit, a good habit. Uh, you learn how to walk again, how to sit again, how to eat again, how to drink again, how to talk again, in such a way that uh, peace and and, and and compassion and brotherhood is possible. I have confidence that the young people can, can do it. I have tried as a young person. Good luck.